much for joining us online this morning. We are so excited to be hearing such a powerful message from Pastor Josh today that will encourage us and invite us to trust in God more today with all we have. But before we get to that, we want to know where you're watching and who you're watching with. So right now, go ahead and leave a comment down below and let us know. Yes, please let us know. Also, if you want to partner with us financially, you can give in three ways. Online, by texting this number, and also sending it into the church. Your generosity helps provide ministries here locally and around the world. Yes. Church, we're about to enter into a time of worship, so we want to encourage you to engage. Get off the couch if you're able to, and just invite the Holy Spirit to whatever space you're in right now. Yes, let's get off the couch. And lastly, if anything speaks to you during the worship or during the message, let us know. Give us some praising hands, throw a heart. We want to hear from you. Yes, that's all for your morning announcements. Let us posture our hearts as the worship team leads us into a sweet moment of worship.
church right now. We want to invite the overwhelming presence of God right now in your living room. So right where you're standing, would you lift your hands, begin to declare over your life, over your home, over your family, the overwhelming, what seems to be reckless love of God as he pursues after you, after your children, after your friends, after your neighbors. Let the reckless love of God flood your home right now. Come on. Let's worship to Him. Let's worship together.
you to think of how personal God's love is. It's not just a general love. It's not just a love he throws out 
but each and every one of his children receives his love in a special way, receives his touch in a special way. God does not look at the masses, but he looks at the individual. God does not search for the masses, but he looks for that one out of the 99. So wherever you're at, whoever you're with, stop and close your eyes. And I want you to sing with me how he loves me, how he loves me. And own that today, regardless of what you've done, regardless what you're feeling guilty of, regardless of the pain, regardless of the hurt. God loves you with an unconditional love, with an unrelenting love, with a reckless love. And he wants you to accept his love. We just thank you for your unconditional love, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Father God, that your presence is, is everywhere, everywhere, once we call out your name, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you that in our homes right now with our families, Lord Father God, that your presence can be so thick, Lord God, that your presence begins to heal, Lord God, that your presence begins to saturate, Lord God your presence brings peace. It brings joy, Lord God. It brings understanding, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Father God, that you are here. You are here. that you would continue to just open our hearts to what you have to say to us, Lord God. I pray that this message, Lord God, would just saturate every part, Lord God, that we would hear your words, Lord God, that we would take away what we get from this message, from this time with you, Lord God. We would share it with our families, Lord God, that we would continue to walk in it throughout this week, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you would just continue what you're doing, Lord God. Continue to work in our hearts, Lord God. Continue, Lord Father God, just to heal and move and work, Lord God.
thank you, Lord God, for all that you do, for all that you are, Lord God. We thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. As we end this worship time, I hope that you will just keep this presence going. Keep your heart open as it is right now. And grab your pen and your notebook and take notes on everything the message has to say today. And pray over it throughout the week. Just continue to let God work in your hearts and work through his presence. Just let it into your home today, wherever you're at, wherever you're watching. Get ready for a powerful message. Hey, good morning, church family. It is so good to be with you here online. I am speaking to you directly from my living room this morning. I thought, what better way to really encourage the fact that God is with us wherever we're at. And I, I am praying and, and believing that God is meeting you in your living room. So why not preach from my own living room and believe that God is going to meet us this morning? I, I'm really excited to bring this word to us uh, today and to you and to my, even to myself. I believe God is speaking these things. And before we get started, I just want to ask you, how are you doing? How are you doing? I would love for you to write a comment right now. If you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and write now a comment for Facebook Live or if you're watching on YouTube via laptop, you can join our live chat right now. I'd love to know if you're doing well. If you are, give us a thumbs up. Give us some hand high praise there. Uh, even throw out an amen. Hey, if during this uh, message, if you feel like, oh, that was good, let us know. We'd love to interact with you. And just like we were sitting in church together, try to shout me down via online. I'd love for you to try. I'm going to keep preaching anyway. So, uh, you know, we've, we've been in, in this quarantine now six weeks we've had this stay at home order and uh, a lot of things have looked different for a lot of us and uh, like i said last week i believe that god is doing something new in us and in this time and in this season and uh, i know that um, this quarantine has allowed a lot of us to stop and to finally look around and see what's really important and what's really not and I think it's kind of crazy and, and a little bit sad that it took a pandemic for us to kind of raise our heads up uh, from being just buried in the sand in a lot of ways to recognize that God is wanting to speak to us in very specific ways. And it's taken this to kind of get our attention, to get us alone, to really understand what God is wanting to speak to us. And, you know, I think for most of us, and including myself, we've not really given God our full or undivided attention for quite some time. For some reason, we try to multitask a lot, and even in our relationship with the Lord, we think that we can have time with Him while we're also doing a lot of other things. But in any other relationship, what kind of quality time is that when we are distracted, when we're trying to do all these other things and still yet, oh yeah, yeah, honey, I'm listening. I do that to my wife quite a bit and she lets me know, you ain't listening to me. And I feel like God has in this quarantine time said, hey, I want your undivided attention because what I have to say to you is vitally important. And I believe that God's word to us this morning is vitally important. So before we continue, let's pray together believing that God's going to speak to us. Lord, we love you. Come Holy Spirit right now, wherever we might be, wherever we're watching, and speak to our hearts. Fill our rooms, our cars, our homes with your presence, mighty God. And allow the anointing of your Holy Spirit to speak to the areas of our lives that we need to hear you most. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, from last week I preached about God speaking in the silence or the sheer sound of silence out of 1 Kings chapter 19. And I challenged, I challenged us to put into practice the disciplines of silence and solitude. My challenge came by way of a, a practice or a discipline called praying the hours where we pray at least three times a day. In the morning we rise up 
give God praise and glory for another day in His presence. In the middle of the day, we stop, whether it's for two minutes or 20, and just sit and be with God and recognize that in the middle of our, our uh, trying and our effort, that God is with us there, calling us to be with Him. And then at the end of our day, bringing all of our prayers, petitions, our cares and concerns from the day and from others to the Lord and seeking Him and believing that God will move on our behalf as we lay our burdens and our issues at the feet of Jesus. And I believe that God is continuing to work in us through that. And hey, if you were able to do that, let us know right now. Throw up a little praise hand like, yeah, whoop, whoop, I did it, Pastor. I, 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 I am practicing that. If not, hey, no shame. I believe that God is wanting to draw you into that. So I would encourage you this week to be to begin to put that into practice. But if you've been doing it, hey, let us know. Has it been going well for you? I really hope that it has been because I know that God is wanting to meet us in the silence. And more than just, you know, I, the reason I asked you to do that is not because I'm trying to create more to-do uh, things on your to-do list. No, I really believe that God is wanting to reestablish a lot of these spiritual practices in our daily lives. And, um, you know, believe it or not, this time that we have now, although God did not cause it, He will cause it to be good for us. He will turn it into good for us. You know, there's a passage where we always say that God can always make it into good, right? He can always turn things into good. What the plan the enemy had to destroy, God will turn it around for our, our benefit. And this virus and pandemic around the world that is causing so much pain and destruction, God is being able to turn it around for our good. And I'm, I'm believing that he's doing that for us as well. And I, I truly believe it. So, you know, we've been, we've been so busy, so focused on what we want to do, right? What we want to accomplish, what we want to get done, what's on our agenda, that sadly we've left little to no time to just be in the presence of God. We, we've almost treated God's presence like, like a, a drive through at a fast food restaurant, right? We pull up, hey God, this is what I need supersize it, right? And then oh, I'm going to go ahead and pull forward. And when I get to the next window, make sure it's hot and ready for me. And then I'm on my way, right? But God does not, God is not a fast food chain and, and we're not in a drive through He is wanting a sit down, intimate dinner conversation with you. Like you're preparing now at home that you might even have later on today. A sit down, like, let, how was your day? How are you? What's going on? He wants that kind of interaction with us. And sadly, for some reason, we've just been so busy, caught up in the cycle of life that we've just ran past God and kind of did a quick hello as we continued to chase after what we wanted. But God has decided to say, hey, I have something better for you. And as society has hit this pause button, I believe that God is wanting to change that pause button in our lives to a reset button. I believe that God is wanting to reset some of the things that we've been missing in our lives that he's called us to. I believe that, that there are some things that God has been wanting to shift in our lives for some times, but we've just continued to ignore him. And I believe, though, as our time draws closer to the return of Jesus, I believe that he loves us so much that he's not going to allow us to continue to ignore the things that he's been wanting to shift in our lives. There are some things that Jesus is saying, I love you so much that I don't want these things to continue to remain in you. I want to work these things out of you and I want to bring you into places with me that you have not yet experienced before I return for my church. I believe that with all my heart that Jesus is preparing us and this message is one area, one aspect that God is wanting to prepare his church in. Like I said last week, I believe that God is desiring to speak to us about the deep things that are within us that we either don't want to address 
or we don't know how to address in our lives. One way that happens, like I said last week, is through silence and solitude, getting alone with God to be intentional about being in His presence, and sitting quietly with God to be intentional about hearing His voice and being in His presence and just recognizing that His presence is there. But like we discussed on Monday night in our Zoom community groups, one of several community groups that are meeting, uh, we discussed this topic. Before I actually talk about what we discussed, I want to I want to just point out to you as you're watching that uh, if you're not yet connected in one of our Zoom community groups, we want to get you connected. This is where we go deeper in the things of God, and this is where we have community. Even though we can't be with each other physically face-to-face, we can still see each other's faces and hear each other's voices. And so if you want to get connected in one of our community groups, go ahead and leave a comment right now saying, hey, how do I get connected? And we'll reach out to you and get you plugged in for a time and a day that works best for you to make sure that you can be a part of our community groups. But as we discussed in these community groups on on Monday night, we talked about the reason why it's so hard for us to be in silence. Because silence causes us to address some of the thoughts or the emotions or the behaviors that we would rather not address. You know, some of us have a hard time just being quiet with ourselves because of the thoughts that we think or the actions we've taken or the emotions we experience or the behaviors that we've had. We'd rather just fill our time with other stuff so that we don't have to really talk about that. But I believe that God is wanting to speak to those things and lovingly confront those things in our lives. So silence does that. But another way that I really believe helps in these areas that God is wanting us to grow in is when we rest, when we actually rest, that God can do His work in us when we're not working, when we stop, when we cease. And sometimes we keep ourselves so busy that we don't have time to think, but now a lot of us having nothing but time and God is now wanting to push that reset button in our lives so that he can reset some of our habits and some of the rhythms of our lives to shift us into a season of regular periods of rest every week. I don't know about you, but a lot of my natural rhythms have been thrown off by this. I don't know if you can tell or not by just by looking at me, but I have not got a fresh fade in quite some time. I mean, I'm looking almost like a uh, I, I, I want my hair to grow like this. This is not intentional. I just have no other option, right? A lot of my rhythms have shifted, right? And maybe, I don't know about you, what, what are some rhythms that, that have shifted for you? Maybe you're like, man, I, you know, I haven't worked out and it's because of the pandemic, right? <laughs> yeah, some of you are saying the reason I'm not working out is because of the pandemic. Some of you were never working out before, but you want to blame it now, Right? Maybe I'm doing that too. My exercise has been kind of thrown off. Actually, I'm getting more exercise now, thank God. A lot of these rhythms have shifted, I think, for the better. Like, I'm getting more time with my boys than I have in quite some time. Uh, The only area that I would love to see more is is more time with my wife because we have to split duties now with watching our boys because we don't have uh, others that, you know, their daycare and babysitting and things, those have all faded away, and so... There have been things that naturally have shifted and the rhythms of even our work time has shifted and uh, time with our family, time uh, 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 with friends has all shifted. All those rhythms have naturally shifted, but I think a lot of these rhythms have shifted for the better and it hasn't been easy though, certainly. Uh, it's, It's taken sacrifice, it's required sacrifice for myself, for my wife, it's sacrifice from family and sacrifice with family and friends, all because of this the situation that we're in demands it. The sacrifice that we are doing right now is because we have been requested to do it, right? We've been asked, we've been mandated. We're, a lot of us are in, in uh, quarantine right now or uh, being sheltering at home because we've been asked to do it. I find it very interesting that 
all you know that all of our schedules has shifted and moved around because we've had this executive order from our government in an attempt to slow down or even in some areas stop the spread of the virus and we all for the most part have been willing to adhere to these rules why for the betterment of ourselves our families and our communities right we're doing this because we want to stay healthy we want to make sure our family stays healthy and we want to make sure our community and our neighbors stay healthy so we listen and we stay at home well what if i told you that there is a greater authority a higher authority than our government that has given also to us a mandate a stay at home order if you will in a way that would benefit ourselves that would benefit our families and would certainly benefit our communities and our neighbors but for some reason for so long we've ignored this mandate almost completely not just as a society but as a church in fact i don't think it would shock you that if you look at this mandate that we receive from god that higher authority that we've often we've often encouraged and rewarded those who have who who regularly break this mandate from god which mandate am i talking about you ask what's that what you're saying which one Pastor, let me tell you which one. Let me tell you which one I'm talking about. Actually, I want to see if you'll guess. I want you to make a guess right now in the comments of, the, let's just look at the Ten Commandments, shall we? And if of the Ten Commandments, you were able to break one, and you probably, if you broke one of these commandments, you probably wouldn't be upsetting a single person around you. And actually, if you kept this commandment, you'd probably annoy more people and upset more people around you than you are right now, just being honest. So what is your guess? Let me, let me, let me, okay, let me give you the Ten Commandments first, because you're like, oh, uh, I don't know. Honor your parents. That's a good guess. But here are the ten, and then you give me your guess in the comments there. First one is worship God only. That's the first commandment. Second one is have no graven images or carved images of God. Three, don't misuse the Lord's name or use his name in vain. Four, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Five, honor your parents. Six, don't murder, right? If that was somebody's guess, that's a great guess, but you're probably gonna offend a lot more people. If you're, if you're like, I've not been keeping that commandment, I hope you have, right? Seven, don't commit adultery. Eight, don't steal. Nine, don't lie. And ten, don't covet your neighbor's things, right? Don't want what your neighbor has. Now, if you said Sabbath, you're right. It's the only command that the church and most Christ Christians are pretty relaxed with. In reality, it's the longest command of the Ten Commandments in that list, the Sabbath command is the longest in, is amount of, in amount of verses in that whole list. It, it takes four verses for God to explain to us why we should honor the Sabbath and keep it sacred and holy. Why is it then that these commandments, in these of all these commandments, we don't take seriously the command to rest? You know, there's this passage in Mark chapter 2, where Jesus and the disciples are walking along the road on the Sabbath day, and the disciples are picking up, picking heads of grain. It doesn't even say that they're eating them. It just says they're picking them. And the Pharisees question Jesus, saying, how can your disciples do what is unlawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus turns to them, and he says in verse 25, have you never read what David did when he was in need and was hungry? He and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God in the time of Abathar the high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and also gave it to those who were with him. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Now, Unfortunately, I've heard this passage used before, 
as a way to discredit the need to observe the Sabbath because not even Jesus' disciples were observing the Sabbath or honoring the Sabbath. And besides, look, Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. So if I'm serving Him or if I'm working for Him on my day of rest, God, God understands. He's in control. It's all good. He's the Lord of that day anyway. So I, if I'm serving Him, it's in good intentions, right? I've even heard people say, look, I'll rest when I get to heaven. There's so much work that needs to be done in the kingdom of God that I can't rest now. I'll rest when I get to heaven. I've even heard some say that, hey, if Sabbath was for me, if it's made for me and not me for the Sabbath, then if it doesn't fit my schedule, then I, I don't have to observe it. Sadly, all of these observations and these excuses are wrong. They're dead wrong. They're not biblical at all. And, and, and the, the sad thing is we've heard so many church leaders in the past, and maybe even currently, who have said these things. And it's not what God's Word tells us. Jesus, actually, he wasn't giving a free pass not to observe the Sabbath. In fact, Jesus perfectly kept the Sabbath. He never violated it. How do we know this? Because Jesus was sinless. And to violate one of God's commands would have been sin. So Jesus kept the Sabbath. And we want to be like Him. What's interesting, and I'll make a little note here, that we want to imitate what Jesus did. We want to imitate God. God rested on the seventh day. But in our imitating Him, we recognize that we are not God. It's ironic that God calls us to look more like Him, to imitate His actions. But when, as we're imitating them, we recognize, hey, I'm not God. God is God, and God is in control. Jesus never violated the Sabbath, and then He calls us to a day of rest as well. What Jesus was saying here was that God created the Sabbath, a 24-hour day of rest for us because He knew we would need it. God made us. He knows us. He knows what we can handle, what we can't handle. He knows us better than we'll ever know ourselves. And He knows that you and I need rest. And because He's a good Father, He gives good gifts to us who knows what we need. So He gives us the gift of rest. It's actually built into us, truly. Scientifically, even, they've discovered through research that humans operate best at their full potential when they work for six days and have a day of rest between another six-day period. That is the Sabbath day. You know, back in the 1700s, France tried to de-Christianize their calendar and tried to increase their productivity, so they changed the seven-day week to a 10-day week and says, we're, we're now going to have uh, nine days of work and a one day of rest every nine days and, and our calendar is going to shift and everything's moving around and it's going to help us project and continue to be a world leader and power back then and sadly what they discover is that it, that had the exact opposite morale dropped depression increased suicides increased because they were they were going against the very nature of how we are created created for a day of rest after six days of work. They hoped to increase their productivity. They got the opposite result. This time, though, more than any other that we've experienced probably in most of our lifetimes, this is a perfect time for us to press the reset button on the rhythms we have established in our lives. But why Sabbath? I believe that God is putting this day of rest on my heart He's been doing it for some time, and even though I've taught about it in the past, I know that many of us are still struggling to observe it, and God wants us to slow down. He wants us to come to Him. He wants us to learn from Him, and He wants us to establish this rhythm in our lives. I know that you know about Sabbath. I know that you know it's important, but I want us to begin to put it into practice Let's do it. Like, why not? 
Let's do this. Let's believe that God has something better for us. Sabbath is not something that we just can know about. It's something we have to do. And the more that we do it, the more that we love it, the more that we understand the practice of it. That rhymed, and that was unintentional. But I believe it's powerful that God is wanting to establish Sabbath. It's something that you just do. We do it. We put it into practice, and we learn how it works. So how do we begin to Sabbath? First, we need to answer what Sabbath rest is and what it's not. First, we have to know that Sabbath is a day that we stop all work, all work, not just going to work, not just doing the things that we get paid for, but not only our job, but our chores. And all the children said, amen. Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen, little one? Stopping our chores, mama, daddy. We stop the projects around the house. We stop all the things that need to be done, the garage, we know it needs to be organized. Lord knows it needs to be organized. But it doesn't have to happen on our Sabbath day. We need to be intentional. This is what Sabbath is about, being intentional. This is the key word, being intentional with our time, with God, and with our family. Being intentional with it. So, so just sitting around and watching TV all day and doing nothing, that's not being intentional. That's just being lazy. Can I be honest? That's not Sabbath rest. That's just Netflix and something. It's a day, really. Sabbath is a day to recharge. It's, it's time dedicated with Jesus and quality time with our families. Quality time. Because a lot of us right now, maybe you aren't able to work right now and you're just at home and, and maybe you're thinking, all I do is Sabbath. All I do is Sabbath, no matter what. No, no, I should have stopped myself. <laughs> no, some of us, just because we have nothing to do doesn't mean we're Sabbathing well. Because really, no one Sabbaths by accident. You don't stumble into this like, oh, am I Sabbathing right now? I had no idea. No, it, there has to be intentionality behind it. Sabbath should recharge you. It should make you feel rested. It should make you feel more connected to God and to your family, to your spouse, to your friends, to your children. You should feel more rested, more connected. I know when I spend most of the time in front of the TV, I feel more exhausted. I feel like, I've, and I feel like I've wasted a day. Sabbath will not do that for you. That will not have, you won't have that feeling there because you've been intentional about connecting with God and with your loved ones. Just sitting around doing nothing, that's not going to cut it. That's not what Sabbath is. So, Sabbath also isn't the rest we take when we've finished everything that we needed to finish on our to-do list. In his book, Subversive Sabbath, A.J. Swoboda says that Sabbath rest is not a reward for a job well done. It is a gift from God to us, a gift that we cannot earn or deserve. If we wanted to take a, a day of rest when we finished all of our tasks, you know it, that we would not be taking a day off. If we would say, when I finish all of these things, then I will finally rest. We'll never get there because there's always something to do. There's always a project to be done. There's always something that we can fix or tinker with or do something. But Sabbath is saying, even though all these things need to be done, I I get to stop if solely for the reason because God said so. God said I can rest. God said I can take this time and spend with him and with my family. There's always more work to be done. There's more chores to do. There's more projects. There's more cleanups. There's more getting a head start for next week. We will always have unfinished business when the Sabbath rolls around, but we need to learn how to stop and take our time with God. However, I also need to say this, that you must prepare in advance for our day of rest. The Jews, as they were preparing for Sabbath, they always made sure they had their preparations ahead of time because they knew they wanted to be intentional with their time on their day of rest. Sabota also, he suggests that on the day before your Sabbath day, prepare a large meal so that you can have leftovers throughout the next day so that 
someone doesn't have to get up and clean and cook and prepare all of those things, that you have those things prepared in advance for your day of rest. He also says, hey, mow your lawn the day before. Feed your dogs a double portion so that you don't have to go out there and deal with their hot mess you know, on your Sabbath day, unless you're just like, I love dogs and I love to roll on the grass with them and it's not a work, it's not a chore for me. I love it, right? But for me, it's a chore. So my dogs, all three of them, are getting double portion on Friday. Come on, somebody. And then my dogs were like, hey, man. <laughs> that, that, was, that was not very funny. Uh, but he would also say, look, for kids, get your homework done the night before so that you don't have to, you know, cram it in like, oh, I forgot to do it. And then it becomes something that you're worrying about when you're trying to rest. Do it beforehand. Get prep work done. This can help you remove these temptations and the worry that would come when your rest day has come. But no, there's always going to be more to do. Just learn how to stop and rest when the day of rest comes. So how do you begin to keep the Sabbath day holy? This is for those of you who have never done it before and you're like, I don't know how this is going to work 24 hours. This is what I would say. Start with half a day. Half a day to rest. Turn your phone off. Make some delicious pancakes in the morning. Go on a walk. Pray. Spend time in prayer. If you have a journal, if you like to journal, journal some stuff down maybe that God's putting on your heart. Journal. Read, get, get your Bibles out. Read a psalm out loud and spend time with the Lord. And I believe that God will meet you there. You know, even in half a day of Sabbath, God will meet you. Now, I know the goal is, the ideal is to have a full day of rest with God. But God knows our weaknesses. He knows our struggles. And he wants to meet us along the way. I think of it this way, right? I've got two boys. And uh, they're always scattering their toys around the house. Always. I'm surprised there's not one under this chair right now. It's everywhere. And I always tell them, here's the ideal, boys. The ideal is to have these toys put in the place where they belong. This, after you're done playing with them, put them back. That's the ideal. Oh, man, how good that would be. And every parent said amen. If, all, if the children always cleaned up after themselves. So my boys know the ideal. Well, at least Corbin does. Griffin has no idea what I'm saying half the time. And vice versa. I don't know what his ramblings are. But Corbin understands. He says, I know, I know, I know. He says that all the time. I understand. I understand. I'm like, do you though? Because you're not doing what I've asked you to. But in the moments where he begins to clean up and put things away, even though it doesn't meet the ideal that I'm putting out for him, I appreciate the effort. Just because he doesn't meet the ideal, I'm not going to be like, okay, get out the house. Move out because you're not meeting my standards. You're not meeting the ideal that I've set for you. No, I'm not going to do that. He's my son. And just the fact he shows some effort, I'm like, hey, you know what? I'll come help you. And I believe that God is the same way. I believe that God says, look, here's the ideal. This is what I would love. I would love you to have a full day of rest, spend time with me, enjoy my presence, and spend time with your family. But I know making that shift might be hard. But any effort that we take to spend time with him, stepping in the, in the, in the direct path of saying, God, I want to meet this ideal. I want to I wanna care about the things that you care about. God will meet us there because he loves us. He's a good father. He wants to spend time with us. And so he'll step in even when we don't quite meet the ideal because he cares about us and he loves it when he sees that we have a desire to care about what he cares about. So start today. Start this week. Sabbath isn't something that you just learn about. It's something that you do. You start Sabbath by doing it and God will meet you. In fact, I know we have been talking over the last several weeks about the, the nation of Israel as they were in the wilderness and as they moved around that God would be with them and dwell with them. The tent of meeting and his cloud and the fire would lead the people. And I love this. There's one passage in Numbers chapter 10 after the Israelites had received the Ten Commandments that I had just quizzed you about. They had received these Ten Commandments and they're leaving Mount Sinai and in chapter 10 of Numbers, in verse 33, it says that the Spirit of God 
goes before them a three-day journey ahead of the people to find a place for the people to rest. I think that's a beautiful illustration of what God is doing right now. He is going before us, church, to find a place for us to rest. He is going prepare, uh, before you to prepare a place, not only just in heaven, when Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you, but I also believe that God is going before us now. He's gone before us. He already knows what's happening. He knew this pandemic was happening, and I believe that God is telling us in this moment, in this time, I have gone before you, before all of this happened, and I have been looking for a place of rest for you. And I believe that God is wanting to establish that now. Let's start the pattern now. Let's create the habit now. Let's start the rhythm of our life of resting in his presence at least one or once a week. I believe that's what he's wanting to do. God has started this for us. He is preparing a place so that we can rest with him. And that happens on the Sabbath. So let's begin to do it this week. Let's do it. If you'll commit to doing it, will you say amen in the comments right now? Throw some praise hands. Say, come on. That's capital C apostrophe M-O-N. That'll work too. Come on. Just try it. If you're willing to start it, let's do it together. And if you don't know Jesus, listen, if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, then how can you enter into the rest that he's prepared for you? If you don't know him, then the rest that you are wanting desperately and needing in yourself can only be found in him. So if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus where you've surrendered your life to him, when you've confessed, God, I am a sinner, be merciful to me. God, have mercy on me, Jesus, Son of God. If you've never done that, you've never said, I'm going to commit my life to you, Jesus. I'm going to follow you. Then this is the perfect opportunity right now so that you can enter into the rest that he has for you right now in this moment. So if, if you would like to do that, let's pray together. And I believe that God will meet you right where you're at, wherever you're watching right now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've created in us a place of rest. And we pray this now, and if you want to accept Christ, repeat this, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I want to know your peace. I want to know your rest. Would you come right now and live in me? Wash me purify me and cleanse me. Forgive me for my sin, for trying to do life my way. I surrender to you now. Come Holy Spirit and transform me from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, or you're recommitting your life to Jesus, let us know. Just say, I prayed that prayer in the comments so that we can know how to reach out to you and encourage you and help you along this journey. This is not the end of the journey. This is the beginning of a life that's filled with the goodness of God, knowing Him. And for the rest of those who know Christ, I want to encourage you to prepare to take a day of rest this week, to seek the Lord so that you will find him and he will be found by you. If that's a word that you're willing to accept, then let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you and love you. We thank you that you've created a day of rest. Lord knows we need it, especially in this time, God, where everything is shifted. I pray that God, as the world has hit pause, that we would hit reset. That God, we would listen to your voice, take your word seriously, that we would honor a day of rest and keep it holy and keep it sacred. Help us to get to that place, Lord Jesus, where we can rest in you. When we know that when we're resting, you're working in our behalf. It takes faith, it takes courage, but we believe that you'll meet us when we do it. We love you, Lord. We praise you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Church, we love you. Thanks for watching. God bless. Thank you so much for joining us online here at Central Valley Church. Our prayer is that this message would inspire you to draw closer to Jesus this week. Yes, great message, Pastor Josh. And also, if you want to stay connected throughout the week, we have Zoom community groups. Our brother Joaquin has a killer one. If you'd like more info on that, give us a comment below, and you can also email us here. Yes, and we'd also like to remind you once again that you can partner with us by giving online at cdcmadera.churchcenter.com or by texting in your offering to the number on the screen or by mailing in your offering to the address on the screen. Yeah, that generosity is always welcome. And don't forget, guys, you can subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, and also like us on Facebook to get notifications and stay up to date on our premieres for the sermons. That is all. Thank you so much for joining us today. We love you. We will see you here next week. God bless. Bye, guys.